In this section, we'll be looking at a variety of applications of integration from physics and engineering. We'll look specifically at problems of finding mass, work, force, and pressure. For this first video, we're going to be focusing on um, problems involving density and mass. So when we talk about density, we mean the concentration of mass in an object. Um, usually density is going to indicate mass per volume, or we're used to density indicating mass per volume, something like kilograms per cubic meter. Um, Although we'll see that we can also have mass per area or mass per um, length as well. An object with uniform density satisfies the equation mass equals density times volume. Um, thinking about our units, if we have um, a density that's kilograms per cubic meter and a volume that's in cubic meters, then we can see how our units cancel to give us um, appropriate units for mass. So that's one way to help you uh, make sure you're always using the right formula is if your units cancel to give the units that you're expecting. So this is the formula here if we have an object with uniform density. That means the density is the same no matter the, the location in the object. If, on the other hand, our density varies within the object, we're going to need to make use of some calculus. The problem of finding the mass of a two or three dimensional object, where our position would be given by, for example, something that's two dimensional in terms of coordinates x and y, or three dimensional in terms of some coordinates x, y, and z, we'd have to use some multivariable calculus because we'd have a density function that would be of x and y or of x, y, and z. So for the purposes of our course, we're going to focus on the problem of finding the mass of a one-dimensional object using calculus, in which we'll have a density function that will be some rho of x. So this thing that looks kind of like a p here is the Greek letter rho. Our density function will be rho of x, or the density um, varies according to our, our position given by x. So we'll be talking about linear density where we're going to have these units of kilograms per meter. So we'll be thinking of mass being equal to linear density times length. So something like kilograms per meter times meters. So let's think through what our formula is going to look like in the case of a, a variable linear density. Suppose we have a one-dimensional object, so we're thinking of some sort of thin bar or wire, that's going to be represented by an interval from A to B. So we have something like this. We're interested in finding the mass of that object, given that the object's linear density is rho of x and varies along the object's length. Okay, so let's think a little bit about this. We know that when we're working with our um, integration problems, that are applications, we regularly make use of this slice and sum strategy where we slice up our, our object into different pieces and think about what we're trying to compute over a small piece and then add up all of those different pieces. So I'm going to take my interval here and break it up into many different little sub intervals. So I have some um, interval here, my ith interval going from xi minus 1 to xi, and I can think of the length of that little interval as being delta x, and then I have some sort of sample point I could pick in that interval called my xi star. Okay, So we can say that over a little tiny interval, the density, the linear density is approximately constant over a little tiny piece. So the mass of the ith segment here we could find according to the formula for mass of an object with uniform density. So this would be approximately rho, the density at this sample location here of xi star. So we just pick a point in that interval and say the densities um, at that point is roughly the same for all points in that little interval, times the length of that interval, which is delta x. Okay, so our the mass of our i segment, we can say that um, density is approximately uniform over that little little segment, and then add up all those different pieces. So our total mass here would then be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity, taking those intervals to be smaller and smaller, of the sum from i equals 1 to n of our density here times our length. And then we recognize this as a limit of our Riemann sum, so we get this formula that our mass is equal to this integral from a to b, of rho of x dx. Okay, so let me just note right here, we're saying that the um, density 
is approximately uniform on the small interval. Okay, just like when we talked about finding the um, the area of a region under the curve, and we would we would um, take our, our region here, we divided it up into the, all these little rectangular re regions, and we would say the height is approximately constant at some sample point over the region. So that slice in some idea is the same thing we're applying here. So let's use this formula in one example. In our example, we're told that we have a thin bar that's represented by the interval where x is ranging from 0 to pi. So I'll draw my object here which goes from 0 to pi. We want to find the mass of this bar if its density is given by the function rho of x equals 1 plus sine x. So we know we're going to make use of our one dimensional mass formula in the case of variable density. So I'm going to have mass is equal to this integral from 0 to pi of my density function 1 plus sine x dx. Again this is representing here my density and this is representing length. Okay, So we're thinking about the, the density here as some sort of mass per unit length times length and we're going to get out of that units of mass. So integrating this we have x minus cosine x since the derivative of cosine is negative sine evaluated from 0 to pi. So plugging in our bounds here we have pi minus cosine pi minus 0 minus cosine 0 we know that cosine of pi is negative 1 and cosine of 0 is 1. So we end up with our mass here being equal to pi plus 2.